Hi guys, welcome back to WD18, the Watford fan channel, and welcome back to another interview. This time we've got former Watford FC goalkeeper Jonathan Bond on the channel for an interview. Obviously, of course, we're joined by Sam again. Um, and interestingly enough, Jonathan and Sam know each other. Sam, do you want to explain the story before we get into what, uh, Jonathan's Watford career about how you guys know each other? Yeah, so basically this was going back to 2015, I think, and my brother was mm. ill and... Uh, the club got in touch and said uh, they'd send over a player and uh, my brother picked Bondi. And uh, from that point onwards, uh, we've uh, stayed in touch, um, talk about talk a lot about football. Uh, he came with us earlier this season to Coventry at home in the League Cup. And uh, yeah, I don't, Bondi just kind of personifies what Watford's all about uh, while he's not at the club. Um, the family values that, you know, he's kind of shown to me and my family, which we're so grateful for. Just, yeah. What a legend. Jonathan, how's it going anyway? Very good. Thank you for having me on. Nice to see you, Sam. Nice to, <laughs> nice to catch up. <laughs> you must be absolutely buzzing with that uh, intro from Sam. <laughs> yeah, very nice. I mean, we're still very close with his family. Joel, he was recovering from a, a heart operation, wasn't he? So, yeah, yeah like you said, he got to pick a, a player. And then, I um, don't know why he picked me, but he, he picked me. <laughs> and maybe Troy was busy that day or something. And... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I went down and his family just made me feel very at home. Tom, I was, and, I was, uh, so, I was, I was so surprised though, because like, like I was expect obviously like championship club and everything, I was expecting you to pop in for five minutes. And I, I remember like you said like you'd come any time between 12 o'clock and five o'clock, I think it was, and you came about 5.15. I mean, obviously respecting that you're late and we were just expecting you to pop in for 10 minutes, but you stayed for about what, mm. three and a half hours, <laughs> played, played FIFA with us, got a takeaway, all of that. It was just, it was brilliant. That doesn't yeah. sound that good, does it? Come 15 minutes late, but I think um, a lot of the stuff is, to be fair, set up by the club, especially back then. Um, I don't know what it's like now, but they were really hot on us, making sure that we, um, fulfilled those um, responsibilities kind of thing and obviously when I'm going to that um, situation I, I've done things like that before we've all done stuff like that before but this was a little bit different like the family just really were warm your family were really warm and uh, made me feel at home and it was very easy to spend you know an hour two hours however long it was playing FIFA and whatnot um, it was it was great and um, yeah I, I think um, I'm a ho I hope that they they carry on doing that kind of mm. thing even now being in the Premier League. Yeah, that's great. And I think we were a bit skeptical actually as Watford fans, Jonathan, when the Potsos came in that we'd kind of lose that community aspect. Really, was that something probably even um, reinforced more when they came in? I think they um, they kept it up uh, because it was so good before. It was difficult to you know make it better, and it definitely yeah. didn't get worse. Um, I, th I remember the pre the pre season. Um, you know, like the the walkway, the cat the catwalk in the park, and, and meeting all the fans, and the fans get to, and you you literally integrate with everyone in the town. That that um, continued. I remember carrying on doing that, um, and nothing really changed in terms of in the community. It was mm. all very. Um, they kept on top of it and made sure we fulfilled those responsibilities. That's great to hear. Top man, Jonathan, thanks so much for coming on. Obviously, a great story with Sam. Um, we'll take it right back, really. Um, when you first started with Watford, how did that journey begin with the club? And um, yeah, how did, how did it first come about? In, in the academy or in the first team? So yeah, just, just right from the beginning, how did you get spotted initially coming through the academy uh, and then to the first team? It was a classic Sunday league. Uh, I was playing outfield <laughs> as midfielder and the goalie, I think for the next season, was... I don't know, he was injured or he just stopped playing, didn't want to play anymore. So we needed a goalie. And the manager, obviously we're all just friends. It's a small Sunday league team, whatever. And the manager, um, he, used, he is affiliated with Watford. So he knew Watford scouts and stuff. And I went to his back garden and I went in goal. And he had a few shots at me and whatnot. And obviously thought, OK, yeah, he seems good enough. <laughs> so I played, started playing. And I think I must have had, like, I can't remember, but I must have had three or four good games. And he contacted Watford scouts to come down and have a look. Uh, the guy watched the game and then later on that evening got a call saying, do you want to come down? And, and in those days, you, you've got a choice. You either go for a six-week trial, or to be fair, it might be the same now. You go for a six-week trial in the academy to get in, or you go to Watford. It might have been called, was it Watford in the community? I can't remember was it development the name of it. Or something? The development centre, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So 
we chose to go to the development center. So we did like a week's training development center and they said, no, look, go for a trial. So obviously it sounds good, went for a trial. And then after like one or two weeks, yeah, we signed, I, I got to sign. And yeah, I just remember walking into school, just feeling like 10 foot tall. I was obviously only yeah. 10. I think I was 10 years old, <laughs> but I felt just amazing. Like I just wanted to tell everyone, but obviously yeah, yeah. no one, that's, you can't start that conversation. Oh, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was, was a bit was, strange, but was this yeah, before was the um, Harefield Academy kind of came into into practice? Yeah, yeah. The the Harefield Academy um, they came in when I was about. It was just before, maybe one or two years before GCSE. So what's that? Fourteen. Uh, yeah, you must have been fourteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. yeah. So that's when it really became a thing. Mark Warburton, I think, was instrumental in making that happen. Um, I think he had been around Europe, Mark. And seen that, especially maybe Holland, and seen that it was a really popular model over there, mm. and he wanted to be one of the first people to do it over here, and that that required people leaving their schools at fourteen, fifteen. Like when you're in the middle of studying for GCSEs, you're leaving your your education at your school and all your friends and stuff, and suddenly you're moving over to Harefield. And I was probably one of maybe two players in the team that didn't. Okay. Uh, my parents didn't 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 think it was a good idea to um, to come out of GCSEs kind of thing, so I stayed. But in many ways, that that model was really good because they were getting thousands of hours more training every day than I was. Mm. Um, I tried to, tried to do my own stuff. Uh, the school were really uh, cooperative, to be fair, my school um, in helping me do that. But um, yeah, no, it was it was a really forward thinking thing at the time, and I don't know how many more other clubs do that. When did that? kind of realization maybe when you thought okay i've got a good chance of making it pro really you said like the gcs um got to that age when did you feel like well when did you first did you get offered the pro contract and then when did you think you know what i can make a career out of this i was probably naive and i just always thought i was going to be <laughs> okay kind of. it was always just that it was never going to stop i was always just it was just going to happen kind of thing and that is looking back that is really naive but i think when I was younger, I was playing one or two years up. So I always felt like I was ahead of, of the curve kind of thing, ahead of the game. And that helped my development. And I think I got offered one when I was 17. I honestly, I can't remember. I, I can't remember now. We did a scholarship. Is it scholarship 16, 17? I think so, and yeah. And then yeah. around 17-ish, yeah. Malcolm Mackay was manager. Um, so 2010, 10, yeah. I think, something like that, yeah. So it was around there, yeah. I didn't realise how many loan spells you had before, because obviously I kind of just mm. saw you in 2012 get kind of in and around the first team. I didn't realise you went, was it five five loan spells, four different clubs, Brackley Town twice, if I can remember correctly? Yeah, I think when when you're a, when I was scholar, the rules were a little bit different back then. Um, I say back then, as if it was like 30 years <laughs> yeah. ago, but it, it, the rules were different. <laughs> um, but um, the, the the rules were different, and my goalkeeping coach was Alec Chamberlain, obviously a Watford legend. Legend. And uh, he thought it was, you know, it was good to go out and play men's football, especially at like 16, I think it was when I first went out <clears throat> to Brackley Town. And uh, that was really good for my development, I must say. That was like, you know, from a youth team to suddenly playing against full-grown, powerful men. Do you know what I mean? It, yeah, it's yeah. really physical down there as well. So um, learning to come through crosses and use your body properly and, and stuff like that was really important. And then went back there again. I think, I think my first year pro under Sean Dyche, I had a loan in the National League with Forest Green, a loan in League Two then with Dagenham, a loan in League One with Berry. I made my debut for Watford in the Championship because uh, Lochi, I think, got sent off away at Portsmouth. And then my full debut, I made the next game in the FA Cup. So in like one season, I played non-league, conference, League Two, League One, Championship and FA Cup. So it was like a hell of a, um, a year for my development, my experience that year. Uh, even if they weren't like, I didn't end up playing maybe 50, like 40, 50 games or anything in the season, but just to go up through the levels at, at 17, 18 was yeah, it was a big it was a big deal for me. I just wanna I just wanna touch on your Watford debut. Um, what's it kind of like? Like, so obviously you know all the fans in the stadium. You're in the Championship now, much uh, much bigger crowds than it would be in the National League or in League Two. You know that first cross comes in and you're about to jump to get it. What does that like? You know, is it is it pressure? Is it excitement? What kind of? How did you feel? 
Uh, I mean, if we talk about my actual Watford debut, it was the last 15 minutes away at Portsmouth. And we were losing 1 0. And I think um, Lochi got. Lochi, he came out and I think he handballed it. And the ref was like taking an age to like make a decision. And my heart was really going at this point. Yeah. I'm thinking, like, what <laughs> colour card is he going to is he going to pull out? Like yellow or red? Did you want to go on, stadium. Jonathan? Did you want to go I on? I, honestly, I was so nervous. I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't tell you. I think really? my head was just spinning. It was like an out of body. I'm watching over there. I'm trying to see like what what colour card he's going to pull out. The, the stadium's going off, 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 and uh, he starts speaking to him. What well, I'm thinking, all oh, right, okay, he's going to let him off. Then he goes, bang, red card. So it's literally like 100 miles an hour now. Where's my stuff? Shin pads are on, shorts are on, like short, uh, trousers are off, shorts are on, everything like that. And to answer your question, sorry, yeah, to go on, it was a night, it, it was, I think it was a three o'clock, but by that, it was in the winter, so that time it was like night time. And it was very surreal. It was kind of like, I'd never played in a stadium that has got people all around and like, that was a weird perception. It was kind of like, I'd used to, okay, League One, League Two, I'd played in, but I mean, there's a lot of empty space. Like there's a lot of gaps between like stands and there's a lot of sort of empty stands and stuff like that. But Portsmouth was like good atmosphere. Like they filled out the stadium and it was just dark, but just people all around you really surrounded. And then the pitch is just lit. And it's yeah. just, it, it's, I'm trying to describe it, but it's, it is just really green and everything. It's just really like, <laughs> it's like a dream. Do you know what I mean? It does yeah, feel yeah. like that. Everything's well lit. And the first thing I had to do, it was a free kick. Luckily it went over. So the first thing I had to do was um, take a goal kick. So just concentrate. Do you know what I mean? On taking I mean, a goal don't, kick st- and, don't stack it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they say big, it's big, like... Big, big Chris Iwilumu up there. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. I miss the Chris. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, they say it's like it's so different between like oh. like training situations and the warm up until you're actually like on the pitch and like I don't know, like, as exciting as it is, like it's just like unbelievable it, that feeling must have been at the same time. It is looking back, but I mean, at the time you're so nervous and yeah. you're just you're just so concentrating on trying to do the right thing that yeah, he didn't, maybe you don't get to take it take it in as much as you should. Yeah. Was there the same nerves when you played against Man City in the FA Cup? Because I'd imagine that was like another big occasion for you. Was it 2012-13 season we played at the Etihad? I remember being there and mm. I, fe- I almost felt a little bit nervous for you because you hadn't had a lot of experience in the in Watford mm. first team. Um, yeah. What was that like, <clears throat> that game? That was, a, that, was, that was a really good experience. I mean, that, I think I was 19, actually, when I played that game. And that was January time. Yeah. Um, I'd played some games in the cup, in the in the um, League Cup, Carabao Cup. Yeah, what was it called back then? Can't Ooh, I think. Carly was it? The, <laughs> the Ka- Capital, Capital one. one, wasn't it? Capital, Capital One. Yeah, one that's cup. it. Change and, uh, every year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I played a few games in in that early in the season. I think got knocked out. Um, but I don't know what it was. I just. I had a confidence. Uh, I had that maybe a young sort of, uh, not, not much had gone wrong for me at that point at all. And um, it was just, I, I enjoyed that game, I must say. Like, I think there was a free kick that went in. You could say it, it was my side, but it was a good strike mm. from Tevez, I think. You know, yeah, I, never, back, I don't think anyone was blaming you for that one. No, so I don't think so. And um, they were obviously just better than us on the day. Um, but to have, you know, a full stand of Watford fans. And then it wasn't like they had filled half the stadium either. It was, you know, it was a proper game. Yeah. Um, on a Saturday afternoon. So that was really, that was a really good experience. Yeah. Who did you, uh, who did you swap shirts with? Well, naturally the goalkeeper was Pantalimon at the other end, but Joe Hart was on the bench. So I got You probably regret that decision. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, but I got both goalie shirts, which was, Nice. Who, who else in your career have you got shirts from though like anyone like off the page like wow yeah well I mean my hero growing up was Kudicini in Czech because I was a Chelsea fan growing up so I got um, Kudicini's when we played do you remember we played Spurs uh, Eustace had a great game do you yes. remember that yeah, yeah. Was that, did Sean Murray um, play in that game 
Was that the game? You might have done, yeah. And we, I think we were actually better than them that game. Yeah, we were. I remember yeah, that. I didn't play, yeah, yeah. but like well, they, they snuck a win. Uh, got Cudicini shirt that day. Courtois, Czech, Diego Costa, um, obviously Joe Hart. Uh, I'm trying to think now. Yeah, I think they're, they're the main ones, yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah, yeah in, term, good in, ter- ones. in terms of that season, uh, Jonathan, that 2012-13 season, obviously the Pozzos came in. You would been there for the transition just taking it back a step to mm. to August when I mean we're signing seven eight players from Udinese Granada etc what was that like as someone who was just kind of constant through that from the previous owners I know we had some financial troubles but to the to the new owners what was that transition like because obviously and I, I think we forget about it obviously Dini had just come out of prison as well so there was a lot going on at that time oh it was a crazy crazy season um that we had like a 45 man squad or something like that <laughs> during that season I, I don't know if there was no limit back then or something but we had like the full squad from when Daesh was there and then we had this whole new like italian like superstar squad yeah Obviously, i didn't know they were superstars at the time but like this whole new squad it was just like they just taken a blanket off a load of new players and it was just suddenly we were just all put together and then I think Zola did really well because he started the season I didn't, we, didn't, we didn't go off to a great start to be fair but he started off the season with those same players by and large you know Big Chris was playing Carl Dickinson was playing Eusty was playing Martin Taylor you know I can't Martin Taylor yeah, was yeah. playing I, he gave Murph a chance as well um, David Murph in so like all those players definitely got a chance and, and got playing time and then he sort of filtered in and mixed in the new guys from uh, from Udinese. And I felt like because Zola was such a, a respected guy, he made he he made it possible for that to happen. There aren't there weren't many managers that would have been able to keep those players happy while these players are coming over from Italy. Um, so that's a really difficult situation, really, as a manager. Um, for myself, it was exciting. Zola was a hero growing up, so. I mean, for him to be my manager was crazy. Um, also, we'd, we'd had Malky Mackay, Sean Dyche. We had no money as well, like before the Pozzos came. And it was really, really, it was English. Do you know what I mean? It was a proper yeah. English, the culture was English or British. Um, so when they came over, it was exciting for me because I, I don't think I'm really a stereotypical English goalkeeper. And I kind of try and take bits and bobs of what I can from maybe like other cultures and other ways of, of goalkeeping. So it was just, it was, it was exciting and interesting for me in that way because it, it's hard to explain, but they just saw it maybe in a different light. Yeah. And they look for different maybe abilities and different features <clears throat> from all the players and also the goalkeeper. So, um, I quite looked forward to that and, and probably um, thrived in that. What was the main difference maybe when Gianfranco came in in terms of the style of play, not only for the goalkeepers, but just in general, the way he wanted you to play from maybe Malky or Daesh? What was the main difference? Because it feel, felt like we were just attack, attack, attack. We'd outscore teams pretty much most mm. games. We were scoring every week. Um, what was the main differences there between the, between the managers? I think he wanted to play out from the back, Zola. And I think we did, to be fair, mm. by and large. But um, I, I think it, we all were also aware, you know, we were realistic and we were playing a really difficult championship league. Um, so maybe we didn't play out as much as... Um, because now the championships changed a little bit and there probably are more teams that can do that. And, and But at the time, it was... Um, it was a big it was it was a big risk especially with a new team bedding in new players to try and play out from the back so that was one of the things i'd say from a goalkeeping perspective you know he wanted to do he wanted goalkeepers to be comfortable with the ball at their feet you know i remember in pre-season he was asking us to chip into like into like pockets i mean i don't even mean the full the full backs i mean like into defensive mid and stuff just a little chip over that and Really? I was like, we were looking at, you know, we were speaking, looking at each other in the, in the goalkeeping department thinking, wow, like he actually wants us to do that. And he did. Um, obviously, when it comes to, uh, you know, the business of the championship in the game, then it's probably not the best thing to do. But 
the fact that he put that into, into our minds, it was clearly a, a shift in mentality. Mm. And in terms of the goalkeepers, what was that like uh, that season in particular, working under uh, Manuel Almunia? Obviously, loads of experience. Um, quite, a, what, quite a big signing for the club, really, in terms of, his, as I said, his experience before Watford. What was that like as a, as a young goalkeeper learning from him? And, and yeah, and what did you take from his game into, into yours? Uh, a lot is the answer, but um, uh, Manu was was a really good goalkeeper. I mean, I mean, my my time in the Watford first team, to be fair, I always worked with like at least one really good goalkeeper at the time. Do you know what I mean? Each year, and Manu was really good. I mean, he just come from uh, Arsenal. He came straight from Arsenal, didn't he, or West Ham? Maybe. I think, uh, he was yeah, on I loan, think it was maybe on West a free. Ham. Yeah, it was on a free with yeah. West Ham. I think. I think if I remember correctly. Um. And he's just his ability at certain things. He was so efficient in everything that he did, and he made big saves. And I mean, even though he was like, how old was he? 35, 36? Yeah, thirty-six. Like yeah, thirty-six. Thing. Yes, he was still agile, and he still wanted to do all the shooting drills, and he still wanted to work hard. He wanted training to be really hard. You know, I've worked with some people who who don't who would rather chill really in training and then okay. wait for the game of the weekend. I mean, he really wanted to train hard um and yeah i mean he set the 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 standard in training really and he was he was also just a nice calm guy it didn't need to be like this crazy loud stereotypical british goalkeeper who's mm. kind of just like very calming influence very intelligent guy um communicated what he what he needed at certain times he was he was a leader as well in the dressing room when he needed to be um, so yeah, it was. I mean, I learned plenty of things from him. Did in terms of like the training change a lot? For, like obviously a con- different manager was the goalkeeper training specifically. Did that really change, or was it very similar to what it was before? So I know you mentioned the, in terms of, like the chipping the balls in, but was that like yeah. was that one of several things that maybe changed when in that season or just in general when you were there? Well, I think um, I mean distribution gets talked about a lot, doesn't it? In, mm. Nowadays in goalkeeping, but um, I think. Yeah, I think we did probably more distribution, which is standard. You know, Alex Chamberlain was the goalkeeping coach. But in terms of everyday stuff, I don't think we needed to change too much. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't, at the end of the day, that it's goalkeeping, try and keep the ball out of the net the best you can. So, in yeah, the the detail of, of each day largely stayed the same, I'd say. Was there an issue at all? With uh, with language barriers, because obviously, you know, you said that Watford, uh, we come from a very traditional English setup. Uh, we had Daichi previously and Malky, and uh, but then kind of when you got all these new nationalities coming in, was there kind of any communication issues or anything? I mean, it depends which one you want to talk about. Like <laughs> Belek, do you remember Belek? <laughs> oh right, Jonathan, I've got to ask you. I was watching a, a live stream with uh, <laughs> with Troy Dealey and he said Steve Leo Belek absolutely stank. <laughs> oh, I don't remember that to be honest. Um but like from a language point of view, yeah, I mean I, I don't remember him saying a word of English. I'm also the same with Pancione. Yeah. Remember Jean oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Antonio? <laughs> what about um, hey, Jeffrey uh, Mungibia? What a player. <laughs> yeah, I, well, he came late, didn't he? Oh, what? Yeah, I mean, I don't remember what language he spoke to before. I don't remember <laughs> speaking. My, 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 where was um, Alex Alex Gecko? Came on the playoff final. Where, where was he? Oh, no, he was, yeah, no, he was a, a big personality in the change room. He, um, he was a good player and he spoke really good English. And he was, he was one of the players that linked both... Um, yeah. I want to say both change it because weirdly actually back then the tra- we didn't have like a big changing room we had two so you very much had the the changing room so if you imagine a corridor down the middle and then at the end there's there are two change rooms either side of that corridor so you can sort of see into the other one but like i think you know everyone has their established places and you know all the uh experienced pros the english guys are in one and then all the new sort of uh yeah, foreign lads and myself are in the other one. And he was a good link. He was a good link, Gecko, because he was just so, he was funny. He was a really funny guy. And you can't help but but like him. Um, and the same with Joel, with Matty Vidra. Yeah, yeah. Alman Abdi spoke perfect English. You know, these guys were really, really nice guys, very laid back, and they got accepted very quickly. So what could have been potentially a difficult situation wasn't because... Maybe they chose. Maybe they chose those players because they knew they had the personalities to do that. 
Who were the big characters, Jonathan? I know you touched on uh, a couple there. Who was like, was there maybe some that you didn't mention there that really stuck out in the dressing room? Oh, Big Chris. Big Chris is yeah, yeah. massive. <laughs> uh, was, Troy, see, obviously. was Troy always loud? Yeah, Troy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Troy was just always himself. Like, even the first day he came back from when he was inside, he was just, you know, you're wondering, like, what is he going to, what's he going to be like? Is he going to be, like, quiet or shut? Literally, like, he'd never been away. And I, really? I, I quite like that because also in training, I remember he came back and he was, he was banging them in. I think at the time we were probably looking for a striker just before he came back. And um, we didn't really have, we had big Chris and... That was it. I don't. Well, the thing I, like, is, he said that there was like eight strike. Well, he was eighth in the list. So I was trying to work out the other day. It must have been C- Big Chris, uh, Vidra, Hayho, Forestieri. Forestieri. Yeah, now you oh, mention it. Yeah. Connor Smith. Was he involved? No, That's Connor. Like... Connor was a midfielder. Oh. So um, anybody else? Well, the thing is, though, is I mean, Vidra and Forest. They're not. They're not your your focal point, are they? True. You know, yeah. we had one focal point, which was Chris. And then even Alex, I don't think Alex was very much a focal point. Gecko, sorry. He was a skillful player and he liked to drop off and get involved in the play kind of thing. So when Troy came, you could actually do both. And the way he linked with Vidra and Forestieri, I mean, I, 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 I kind of had forgotten how skillful Troy was. Do you know what I mean? In that, in that period where he was gone. So when he came back, I mean, I, me- I remember really clearly those first few training sessions and like he, he had an an understanding with Vidra and Forestieri as if they've been training for a, a year together. And yeah, I think that was probably a big moment probably for us. Mm. Just, just thought, go on, away, go on, from, uh, away from those, away from those three players though, uh, a question that I mean, I saw come up quite a lot uh, when we asked for questions from the fans, how good was Alwin Abdi? Like in training in matches, yeah. just one of the best you've played with? Yeah. The professor, as I <laughs> called him, he was really, <laughs> He was re- honestly, he was amazing that season, and even the, the seasons after, he really was a really good player. And I don't know what stopped other clubs coming in and taking him because he was so good. His first touch was incredible. His weight of pass incredible. He just made it look so easy, and probably went under the radar for quite a while before people started realizing what he what he was doing. Mm. Yeah, what a player. Um, it's I mean, actually... I think about that midfield now. Actually, there's players we only mentioned: but Tokyo, oh. Hog. Chaloba, you know, it was like a hell of a lot of talent in that changing room. Changing just a, room. Just a quick one on uh, on Nate. Did you believe he'd? Well, we didn't know he'd come back to Watford, but did you believe he'd become an established Premier League player? I know he's had his problems with injuries, but that season when he came in, I remember. Obviously, he scored the great goal away at Leicester, but what a play! He just looked like such a big talent. Yeah, he was. I think he was only seventeen. I think. I was eight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I might be completely wrong there, but he was really young and. Yeah, I do remember. I remember thinking that you know he was going to spend this season with us, and then after that, he would go on to play for England, like for sure. He was that talented. Really? Yeah, yeah, he was really he was he was that good. Wow, very good player. Um, we'll talk a bit more about yourself in that season. Uh, it took till the whole game, I think, for you to make your first start in because obviously uh, Manuel had been playing really well, and then you went on kind of a run of six games or so while uh, Manuel was injured. Did you believe? When you had those um, those six games that you'd continue to be number one after that, or did you feel like was it made pretty clear to you that you'd, you'd fill in and then um, Almu and you would come back in um, when he kind of recovers from his injury? Um, if I'm being honest, I, th- I always knew Manu would come back in. Okay. Um, but I think looking back now, I wish I'd had a slightly different mentality kind of thing. I kind of. Manu was so much older. You know, he was 35, 36. He played in Champions League, Champions League finals. He would played at the top of the Premier League. And I'm 19. I've played in like Brackley Town. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, the difference yeah. <laughs> between us at the time. But actually, you know, if, if I was telling my 19 year old self now, would be you know still fight for fighting for that place kind of thing. And and. I remember playing those six games and I think I, I did really well in those six games. And that was like, was it March, did you say? You made your first league start against Wolves in March. Um, then yeah, you played March, six games yeah. and then you got man of the match against Hull. So it was a pretty good yeah. introduction. Yeah, I mean, and that, it was it's coming to the business end, that, isn't it? It was one or two months left and we're going for promotion. And um, yeah, it was, it was difficult. Um, 
Um, the first game was uh, Friday night live on TV away at Wolves. Mm. And I remember because pitch. because yeah. um, Manu um, Manu pulled his hamstring in the game before. I think it was home to Derby, and um, yeah. So then I knew I'd be playing this next game. And I was like, I was looking straight on my phone after the game. What's the next game? Wolves Friday night live on Sky. And the thing is about Friday night games is you know everyone's watching in the football community because there's teams up and down the country who are staying in the, in the hotel the night before. True, yeah, yeah. So you've got at least half the community will be watching the game and then most people watch it anyway, kind of thing, from at home. So it's always like a, it's a big game, you know, if you're playing live on Friday night. And um, yeah, I remember being, I was nervous for that game, but it went, I think I, I played really well that game and then we, I think we drew, we should have won. But we drew one all. I think yeah, Abdi scored in that game. Was that in the blue? Scored kit? a free kick. Yeah, 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 it was in the blue yeah. kit. Oh, yeah, that was delicious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course, Dini scored that. As a no, Abdi. yeah, Alman, yeah. Um, and then from then on, yeah, I had a, a run of games. And then I think the last game in that run, like you say, was was Hull, and um, that was massive because we were going for second place together, weren't we? So we played yeah. Hull was away. that the away game? Yeah, and we needed so, to win. We well, needed that, to win. That's the thing that I mean. You've come in there with some big games, so I'm. I'm okay. Almunia was probably expected to come back in, but I'm surprised maybe Jan Franco didn't think about it because you didn't put a foot wrong really when you could have, especially in that in that period. I think to be fair for any of for any goalkeeper of any age, it it can sometimes take you like three four games to get going, and I kind of felt like I was getting better like with each game, and I think when I hit the whole game, you know, it was a massive game and. We won one nil, kept a clean sheet, and I played really well. And there might have been an argument for it, but like, it, it's not going to happen if I myself don't believe that I was going to stay in the team and that it was just going to come back um, back in. Um, but I mean, f- from then on, I'm, I think Manu was struggling really with his hamstring, and I'm not sure. Maybe it would have been better to leave because he then, I think he then pulled it again. He was playing injured and yeah. stuff like that. So. Um, uh, maybe it maybe it would have been better to maybe just keep me in for another couple of games, give him a bit more rest or whatever. But no, I understand it's a it's a big um, it's a big part of the season, moment of the season, a, a promotion run in. So you you tend to go with experience in those kind of scenarios. Mm. And I've got I've got to ask you, Jonathan, about that Leeds game towards the back end of 2012-13. Uh, now, as yeah. you mentioned, Almuni had his hamstring problems. I think he pulled it in the warm up, if I can remember correctly. You get the call. What is that like as a goalkeeper? Again, it's a unique situation where you, one minute you're not playing, next minute you are. Um, and I felt it did. I will go on to it, but Jack Bonham. I mean, that must have been hard to get mm. to get over, really. But if we take it right back to the start in the warm up, you you get the nod that you, you're starting. What was that like? I mean, it was the last game of the season. If we bettered, Cardiff's result were going up. And I'm, it was the build-up to the game was huge. Like I, I was nervous even the few days before, and I wasn't even playing. So it was like a, it was a massive game, and we just felt like we had that momentum, we had that magic with us that season, didn't we? It was kind of like I don't know what it was. We were playing like amazing football, and we were scoring late goals, and we had so much talent. And I kind of just feel like I felt like it would it was going to happen that day. Mm. Um, but the, the games leading up, Manu had been, he'd like half pull his hamstring every game. So I'd spend like 80% of every game warming up. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm, I'm always looking at him like, is he holding his hamstring? Like literally every single game, I'm kind of like, I'm always getting warm. So if I'm like a midfielder ready to come on. But the last few games of the season, it kind of wore off and he was clearly fine. So it never occurred to me that, obviously I'm always ready, but like it never occurred to me that he would, pull his hamstring again mm. in this game and maybe the tension of the day or whatever and the muscles get tight or whatever but it was literally like one of the last crosses he took of the warm-up and he just smashed the ball and he was like swearing to himself in Spanish <laughs> I was just <laughs> looking I was like what's he, what's he going on about here like, what is that, what, like what's happened Yeah. and he just starts walking towards the tunnel and I was like he's still got kicking to do here do you know what I mean we've still got like five minutes of the warm-up left so I quickly it was dawning on me that he's pulled his hamstring here and I'm going to be playing. But the thing is, it wasn't, I, I didn't know until we, we both went in at that point. So we stopped the warm up. So it's not like I stayed out with Chamber and got um, warmed up. We all went in. 
And then we had a, a physio who was testing his hamstring in the thing. But I then had to get ready. So I got ready into my kit. But I'm still not sure whether at this point everyone's in the tunnel. Yeah. So leads are lined up in the tunnel and everyone's leaving the change room now to go into the tunnel. And I'm in kit and I still don't know whether I'm playing. Like Manu's also in kit. So we're both in kit, but like we're waiting for the physio to say whether Manu should be playing or not. So it's literally like Chamber came out and said, like, bang, all the best, good luck, you're playing. So I was like, right, okay, I am playing straight into the tunnel. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't like, it was literally last second. Wow. So I found out for sure, went straight into the tunnel. And um, yeah, 20 minutes later, I get knocked out. It's just <laughs> it's a crazy mean, day, really. That is unbelievable. I don't know how, I know, as, yeah. how as a goalkeeper, you're going from one minute, you're like, I guess you kind of were thinking, oh, you might be playing, but then to like receive the nod, what, like 15 seconds before you're walking out, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, That's it was... Mad. It was it was just a mental day from minute one. He pulls his hamstring. I go in. I then get knocked out, and um, you, the third goal keeper's in. Can you talk us through in. that? Because it was it was the collision with uh, Dominic Pollion mm. and Akechi Anya. Anya, yeah. From your perspective, yeah, yeah. when that, I mean, to be honest, Pollion, I remember he came back to the crew and he got a lot of stick off the Watford fans. Yeah, I remember yeah, that. yeah, um, yeah. What, have you watched it back and you've have you thought about maybe the incident itself and thought? he was at fault for it because he did seem to push a catchy into you. Um, my last uh, memory was, I remember thinking, I'm going to go for that, like to go get the ball. It was a ball over the top or something. Yeah. And I remember thinking, oh, I, like I wasn't sure that I was going to get there. That's all I remember. Then after that, I just remember waking up in, in the ambulance. But I have watched it back. And I think they're both running at full, full pelt. And he's not, he's not meaning to knock me out. Do you know what I mean? He's just me. What he did was push the catchy and just is hoping for the ball to pop out. Do you know what I mean? If, if we collide, the ball's going to pop out and you never know what can happen. I, I kind of, I, I know, um, I can understand why he sort of did it. It's a bit naughty, but he, he did what he did. And um, yeah, I mean, when I watch it back, I think I probably could have protected myself a little bit better. Maybe kind of, I don't know, just turned away or something as I've caught it. But, on that day, you just want to do everything spot on. It was one of the first things I had to do or whatever, like, of the game. I just literally caught the ball and I was just there. Do you know what I mean? Like, no protection. I wasn't protecting myself whatsoever. I just wanted to make sure I had the ball. And obviously, that's what made, yeah, that's what made it happen kind of thing. And you just so, completely blacked out after that? Yeah, literally completely. Wow. Um, maybe vaguely remember being on the pitch. Uh and, but no, and then most of the time just sitting in the ambulance. Um, my dad was in the ambulance and he was looking at me like, obviously, really concerned mm. kind of thing. But I thought everyone was being like they were when they were looking at me because I'd made a mistake. So I was certain I'd made a mistake and I just wanted someone just to tell me. Like, I was just like, what happened? Because I remember the last thing that I remember was that I was, I was going for the ball and I wasn't sure I was going to get there. So I thought I basically mm. messed up and that they were one nil up or whatever it was. But um, yeah, after a while, I kind of I realised that it was still nil nil when I was in the ambulance. And yeah, it was uh, yeah. just an unfortunate day. Troy got sent off as well, didn't he? Oh, yeah. yeah, I think it was yeah. a challenge on Michael Brown. I mean, it was unnecessary really, but um, it, yeah. they were just there to spoil the party. I remember that so vividly. It was just, their fans were up for it. They just wanted to completely spoil the party. But mm. what I wanted to ask you about, Jonathan, was, was Jack Bonham now... I do really feel sorry for that. Like, I've actually met him before, before that game. He was, I went to Watford uh, Development Centre and he was a really nice lad. Um, and obviously you must have known him a bit better. Mm. It's Of course, it's difficult for a keeper at any point in the game to come on. But for that long, after 20 minutes, he, I mean, before the game, he didn't even think he'd be on the bench, let alone starting. What, could you maybe, <clears throat> did, did you have to console him afterwards? Obviously the mistake from McCormack or was it... Did he kind of well, I wasn't. I was in the hospital. Well, but, not um, you, but like, in terms, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, not you, but in terms of like the team, what was it? What was the atmosphere in the dressing room like after that mistake? Having promotion there and literally mm. slipping, slipping it out again. I don't, I, I don't know what it was like in the change room, but um, I know that I think Jack had found out that he, his contract wasn't going to get renewed. Do you know what I mean? Not long before that game, and to go into the last game of the season where he's not really had a sniff of even getting on the bench that much. 
maybe when I was playing, to be fair, he was on the bench for those six games. But for for one game left of the season and for both goalies to go into the start of the day fit as a fiddle and for suddenly to be on the pitch in the most important game of the season for a 19-year-old is a hell of an ask. Do you know what I mean? That's a massive ask. So <clears throat> I think... I don't think... Um, I, I need to watch the game. I've not seen the game. I've only seen the goals. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So, for all I know, he could have had a great game and then just there's just two unlucky moments or whatever. But um, that can happen. As a young goalkeeper, that can happen. And Jack's a really good goalkeeper. And he's doing really well now. So, um, he's proven that, you know, that was just a freak one-off day. And he, to be fair, from the most difficult of starts, he's done really well. So, um, that's, that's really good to see. Yeah, that is good to see. Um, and obviously, if that moment hadn't happened, we wouldn't have had the uh, the famous Leicester game. Mm. Now, I've got to talk. Yeah. You, I mean, the thing is, the goal. Okay, it's massive. Everyone remembers it, but everyone remembers your celebration with <laughs> with Jan Franco. I don't know what, what I was doing. What was going on there? <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. Um, oh. I remember. I remember. Obviously, when we scored. I wasn't really. I was running down the touchline, but I was just wanted to. I wanted to hug someone. And obviously Zola was like the nearest person. And I'd kind of, I didn't know that Troy had run here. Do you know, he, he had run like into the stand right next to us, hadn't he? Yeah. I was not looking at Troy. I was just, I was trying to like, just get hold of anyone so that we could just like celebrate. But obviously Zola, no. it's a bit embarrassing that he's quicker than me really. You know, I was just like chasing him. <laughs> <laughs> just couldn't get, I just couldn't get, um, I just, I, I just couldn't get hold of anyone kind of thing. I was just like running around like an idiot. <laughs> and obviously that's a bit annoying now because obviously it get, does get played a lot and hopefully everyone's just focusing on Zola and the fact that he slips <laughs> no one's looking at the fact that I'm pushing that's him over brilliant. Like, that is brilliant yeah but um it's funny like obviously uh I mean as fans we could talk you through how we were feeling dreadful I'm sure you felt the same but as a player like the injustice he must have felt with knockouts dive and then moving up the pitch the penalty miss and then you know Cassetti clearing it like can you talk us through your emotions as each phase kind of happened? Especially from the view from the bench as well. That's un- I don't mm. think anyone's really given an account from the bench. Yeah, I mean, my, my memory is uh, a bit vague, but I remember, I remember thinking that looks like a pen. I remember thinking that. And I remember going, oh, you know, when, when something happens and like, like if, if a penalty appeal happens and you're like, oh, please don't blow your whistle kind of thing. <laughs> But I kind of thought, like, that looked like a pen. Now when I've seen it back, it's never a pen. Yeah, yeah. But um, at the time, I kind of understood why I gave it. And at that point, I kind of had not given up, but I'd be like, right. I mean, it's easier to just accept now that that's the end of it. And, you know, rather than hope he saves it, and then when obviously he doesn't, (laughs) it's just like heartbreak. But um, I kind of was like, right, okay, yeah, we are going, we're going out here and whatever. So when he saved it, you're already half the bench is out. Do you know what I mean? So you're already half out. I think I ran to the touchline, and then I was just like celebrating, like put my back to the pitch, not like, got sort of never really got fully back onto the bench. So we we're all sort of half out. So now we're all watching. Do you know what I mean? Ready to go because literally like the day before, the week before, Doncaster did it, didn't they? Yeah, in yeah. League One, the exact same thing, crazy. So um, you could just feel it was going to happen. It was just the, the momen- momentum was building. The cross came in. You, it was like it was always going in, no matter what. I mean, that's quite a difficult finish from Troy yeah. as well to keep that down. <laughs> and like, but it was it was just going in, no matter like what happened. <laughs> and obviously, when he's hit it, it's just you get to run just down the touchline. Yeah, yeah. it, it is good. It is good. Yeah, it's like our own Iniesta moment. What was the uh, what were the scenes like after that game? Because I think Jean Branco, he did an interview with Sky and he basically said, looking back on it, we probably over celebrated a little bit that game. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I think I I don't think we did, but I think the fact that we did celebrate the way and we did gave Palace a bit more. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, 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 if Palace are sitting at home looking at that, I mean, especially Holloway, it just gives them that. Oh, these boys think they're up. Do you know what I mean? It, it really does give you that extra motivation and the way that we played football. I mean, the final, it was such a dry day that day. Which, I was going to touch upon that. I mean, oh, yeah, I mean, it, it played into their hands perfectly. I mean, their nervous occasions 
full, like full stop kind of thing. They're always difficult games to play in, but it was so dry and it was so hot. And Palace just came and stifled, basically. And then they were good on the counter, like with Zaha, um, uh, just causing havoc down the wings. And yeah, the longer it went on, you, I was just hoping for penalties, to be honest. Mm. I mean, one of the most difficult moments that day was, do you remember when Fernando hit a shot? It was, are they after they scored the pen? And yeah. someone headed it off the line or something. I really thought Joel, that was going Joel in. Ward off the line, yeah. Was it off the line? Yeah. 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 You knew that wasn't going to be our day. I remember Chalaba had a really... I was actually um, sitting near the bench because we had like free tickets. That, oh, I can't afford that. Don't worry. I can't afford those hospitality tickets. <laughs> but I actually remember sitting... I was right next to the Watford bench and it was weird because I was actually sat really near you, Jonathan, actually. it was. I think Chalaba came off. He was just not on it at all. Gianfranco was almost just sitting there in... Just looked perplexed, really, because it just wasn't the Watford team we'd seen throughout the season. It was just such a bad game, wasn't it? It was like nothing happened. I mean, I've seen the highlights. I think they actually had probably a few more chances than we did. Yeah. But um, I think Manu played really well that day. Armunia. Um, I don't know. If it was maybe the semi. It's easy to say, oh, we over over celebrated the semi final, and you know we shouldn't have. We should have just concentrated yeah. a bit more. But actually, I tell you what, we did. We went to Marbella. We went to Marbella on a, on a week's training. And looking back now, I think maybe we should have just stayed in England. Um, when and just that concentrated. After the semi-final. Yeah. So after we after we got to the final, you have two weeks before the final actually is played. And I think in the first week we went to Marbella, which is a pretty standard thing to do. To be fair, it's not like outrageous, but. Um, I think a couple of players picked up a few injuries in Marbella. And uh, I remember Fernando was injured. Vidra was injured. Someone else as well who was quite important. I can't remember who it was now. Might have been Joel Ekstrand. Hurt his ankle yeah. or something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, th- I think, personally, you should just stay in England. Just continue the routine. You don't need to go on like a pre-season sort of week away just to concentrate, eat well, sleep well. Do you know, rather than traveling around, it's, it's hot. You're training at different times. You're training on a different pitch. It's just, it changes everything you do. And I think looking back, we should have just stayed in England. I mean, you've said this word multiple times just now, but the whole day was dry and it's so hard to find any positives out of that. And it was, you know, we didn't play too well. It wasn't a good game of football. It was hot. It just, it wasn't, they're just, the whole day was a bit of a blur and no one really like seized it. But, Looking back on it now, would you say in a way it was a blessing in disguise that we lost that game with regards to the fact that we might not have been ready for the Premier League? Yeah, obviously the ground wasn't ready, but do you think that extra two or three years we spent in the Championship was beneficial? Yes and no. I think if we had gone up, I don't think they would have replaced Sola like they did Djokanovic. And they did replace Djokanovic, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Kanovic didn't start the Premier League. Season, <clears throat> there was uh, issues with his contract. He wanted more money, and they just couldn't agree yeah. on the deal. And I think I don't know because the Pozzos are really, really intelligent owners, probably the most intelligent. And they, um, I would, they would have found it difficult to replace quite a few players in that team because they, they were so good. We were so good, and we did so well, and the manager was so popular, and we had this momentum. But I'm not sure that that was suited probably to staying up in the Premier League. Do you know what I mean? The thought of that team that we had in the Championship playing in the Premier League, that's a big ask, I think, for that team. So it would have depended what we did in that summer. But the next time around, when we did get promoted, our team and the club were definitely more ready to be, to sustain that. You know, they replaced Djokanovic, which I thought was very harsh at the time. But, they make clever decisions. They bring in the right players. They change the style of play to be a bit more conservative, pragmatic. They went a bit more direct. I remember that season. And um, I just think it would have been difficult to go pragmatic and go direct with the team that we had in 2013. So, yeah, yeah it's an interesting question, that. But um, probably were better off, uh, more suited second time around. Mm. Yeah. And then we... Uh, obviously, we stayed in the championship that season, 2013-14 season. What was um, we started with Zola, ended with Sonino. Um, 
it, I got the it gets the uh, well we get the impression as Watford fans from the outside that Sonino wasn't really liked from the from the Watford players. Now I don't know whether you wanted to comment on that, but it seemed like there was definitely some tension there, and maybe the methods he had with the and the players didn't really suit that, or they didn't enjoy it. What was what was your take from a player who was in the squad at the time? I mean, we we went from Zola to Sonino. I mean, they were like opposite ends of the spectrum. You know, Sonino was. I mean, Sonino is a really, really nice guy. He's a really, really nice guy. But as a football manager, he's, he really demands a lot. Do you know what I mean? He wants to train hours. You know, he would, he would keep us out there all day if he wanted. It's, he was stereotypically Italian. Do you know what I mean? He wanted to train for long, long sessions every day. He, wanted, he was uh, aggressive. You know, in the way that he spoke, he couldn't speak English, which obviously didn't help. But everything about him was like he was aggressive and he was very much in your face. And as as English players, you, I think we take it the wrong way. The Italians, they had all seen it before, kind of thing. They know almost to take it with a pinch of salt a little bit, kind of thing. They know that he means well and that he's trying to get across his ideas, but he is just like this. Whereas we don't understand that because we don't speak Italian. So it's difficult to, when, when he's being that aggressive, it's difficult to kind of figure out, you know, what, what he means and what he's trying to get across. So I think the language barrier is a big, big problem. But um, his methods, I don't think, his training regime was difficult for the players to get, get their heads around. I mean, I think just generally that season, you know, coming back off, off the back of the last season, trying to play really good football, I think the squad maybe lacked a little bit of pace that season you know we were trying to play more possession based we weren't quite so dynamic we didn't we lost a lot of the English uh, core uh, the British core sorry um, that was uh, that, that was in, in the background even during that season which probably went unnoticed so um, there were there was just a few things we didn't quite get the balance right that season and um, uh, Zola was unlucky to un- unlucky to go because it was just a difficult it was just a difficult situation we found ourselves. In. Yeah. That was that's really interesting, Jonathan. In terms of like um, just a bit before Sanina with Zola, did you get the feeling that he was going to move on? Um, and did you ever get an explanation to why? I know we weren't doing great in the league, but was it a case of like the dressing room, the mood inside the dressing room became a bit negative, or was it just his his ways just started to come a little bit outdated, maybe? No, no, I just think it happens in football where you get, <clears throat> what happens is you lose a couple games, you lose a third, confidence starts to go and then you just get, it can literally happen to anyone. I've, I've been in so many clubs where it's happened and you get into that that rut and then you're, you're looking at your owners, you know, are they, are, they, are they the type to stick through that kind of period or do they like change? Do they? I mean, they have great connections. They probably have a whole list of great managers that can come in, kind of thing. So, I think it was it was just a bad run, and managers lose their jobs for bad runs all the time. It's pretty standard mm. now. Um, yeah. But yeah, like you said, we weren't doing great in the league, and I think that was just the uh, long and short of it. Mm. And in terms of yourself, just that season before we move on to the promotion campaign, um, did you feel under Sonino was maybe more opportunities? Then Zola, I know you did have that run in the 2012-13 season, but did he make it clear to you that you were more part of his plans or was it a case of, I mean, he was still at the club at the time before Aurelio obviously joined in 2014, but did you feel like there was more chance of getting in the number one spot at that time under Sanino? Yes, I think so. I think some various things happened during that season and I got a lot more game time. But, I mean, a difficult thing for me that season was we had a change of, uh, we had two goalkeeper coaches now. So we had, uh, Alec was still there and then we had an Italian goalkeeper coach come in as well. And suddenly, I mean, training was really, really different. I was, I was being asked, as a young goalkeeper, you, you, you take on everything you're told as well. You don't really have that authority to say no, like, oh, this, is, <laughs> yeah. this is me as a goalkeeper, like, yeah. I'm going to do it my way because this works. I was kind of taking on, like, new things. And I felt like I probably struggled a little bit that season because of that um so my performances weren't where i wanted them to be but looking back you know as a young goalkeeper to completely change how you do almost everything and you know you'd lost i'd lost zola as a manager who it's strange like once you do well for someone you know you have their confidence 
and then Sonino's come in, probably doesn't know anything about me. And you come in and you have to, you know, you have to reprove yourself. That's standard in football or whatever. But I was having to reprove myself whilst having to do this whole new training regime and like way of, of goalkeeping. So um, it was a really difficult season for me uh, personally I mean, it wasn't a nightmare by any stretch but like it was just a bit it was just a bit more of a downer compared to the season before and the season yeah. after you know what I mean so when you look back on things you feel like they're probably worse than they were but um yeah it was just it was a little bit more you, you learn more in those seasons but um it was just a bit more of a difficult season for myself personally moving on to uh, the promotion season um while they stayed with Beppe, uh, they they hit the reset bu- uh, button multiple times, as uh, it's famously known for managers that season. Uh, as you mentioned already, uh, it was quite hard adapting to that new training style. But what's it like as a player, particularly in the dressing room with four managers? It felt like we were having a new one each week. Like particularly Billy, <laughs> yeah. Billy McKinley was there for a week. Like that was one of the <laughs> yeah. weirdest weeks ever when we yeah. appointed Garcia and then McKinley's just come in for like Blackburn away and just pissed off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I came back from school every single day. Like who's our manager now? Who's our manager now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, that was a crazy, crazy time that at the start of that season. I mean, like, when people say oh, how many managers you worked under, I can, I, however many it was, it was like 50, but 49 of them were in one season at Watford. You know what I mean? It was crazy. <laughs> like, we had Beppe at the start, then he went and Oscar came in, Oscar Garcia. Mm. But then I think that's right. And then his heart, uh, he had a heart problem. So then, so then we had <laughs> Billy. Yeah, but who, but who was the manager whilst Oscar was away? Was it his Ooh, assistant? That, I think it was. I think it was a, his assistant. Yeah, I think it was because I remember it was Charlton away. He was in the stands. If I can remember correctly. Yeah, it was in the stands. Yeah, I think. But then was, must it must not have been for long. <clears throat> it must have been but, for a game or so. Yeah. Yeah. So then, so then Billy was manager, and I think he won and drew in his two games. Yeah, it, it was uh, got Brent, off to a great start. Brentford and Blackburn, <laughs> and you're thinking, you know <laughs> yeah. what? The, the <laughs> McKinley well done, Revolution. Like, here we go. <laughs> Yeah. Vidra scored, no. scored a cracking volley in that. Oh, yeah, that was game. a great goal. Oh, yeah, he scored a lot of great goals. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we'd had Malky and Daishi, then we had Zola, Beppe, Oscar. And it was like, and now we've suddenly got, you know, someone who who's back to British. And it was kind of like, okay, yeah, that's, that's you know, I understand. At least the, the language barrier is gone now. And then after two games, after two great games, He's out the door. And, uh, <laughs> that, was that was mental. That was mental. Do you know what? I think I think they, they gave him the job. And I think they then literally it was a case of they changed their minds. I think they literally just changed their minds. It wasn't like, oh, we, we've given him the job now. So obviously we're going to stay with that. It was like, actually, no, like I, I've, I've changed my mind. You're gone. And we've got someone else coming in now. And it was just like, it was brutal honestly it was crazy um How and then you... Savisa came go on, in sorry, go yeah, sorry. no go on sorry no, no no I was just gonna say like in terms of that that month or so which was just ridiculous we went from like yeah. Sanino to Ikanovic or whatever what was that like in the dressing room in terms of when you were getting told I mean I imagine you were like you were like in team group chats or whatever like was it people literally saying like what is going on here <laughs> but, no I we didn't have a group chat but I, I don't know what year? 2014. It was definitely WhatsApp in 2014, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. The, the, no, I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I just wasn't invited <laughs> yeah. to the group chat. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, no. What was your question? I forgot. Oh yeah. What was it like? You know what? It was crazy. It was top of the league when Sunil got sacked. Do you remember that? Yeah. I'm pretty sure we were top. We were top of the league, and I, I remember distinctly. I think it was Robin Way when Lloyd died, so it was a, almost a tax Do you remember that? Uh, no, it, oh it, yeah, Robin Way. Oh, do you yeah, remember that? Really I, it was. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember um, hearing about it. <laughs> obviously, we couldn't watch the games at that time in the championship, which you take for granted now. But you couldn't watch any of the games, and you see on yeah. Twitter, we're like. Lloyd Dyer has just gone over to Sonino and told him to basically fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that was. I can't remember what that was about. It, that was mad. obviously maybe just not not playing him, whatever. Yeah, but um, yeah, I mean, and we were top of the league and we sacked our manager. It's just like, I mean, in in many ways, you just got to trust in the Pozos, haven't you? Like they're so intelligent, they're so well connected, they know what they're doing. They've always got a plan. They're not just sacked someone and thought, right, let's look for a manager. Do you know what I mean? They always they always know their next two, three, four steps. And um, 
yeah, it paid off in the end. That season we went up, didn't we? Mm. So in terms yeah, of Savisa was a great manager. Oh yeah, I was going to touch yeah. on him, Jonathan. In terms of like mm. Slav, what uh, I mean, the, it was a it was a crazy couple of months. But with Slav, what was what was he like? Because he just seemed ruthless. I mean, uh, the perfect example is obviously Brighton, Brighton away. Yeah. I, I think it was twenty minutes gone, and he he takes off Anya. Um, that was and uh, to be fair, Troy said um, in an interview he said. And you didn't actually throw his, um, throw his toys out the pram that game. He came in at half time. It was basically like, it's about the team. Was that the mentality? And also, Jukanovic, what was he like to, to work under? He was great. He was really good. I mean, he was, I think he, he was ruthless, but like, because he was, he was Serbian and he has that kind of, they're, they're all kind of like very authoritative. They're very serious. Um, I say they as if they all are, but he was. Kind of <laughs> yeah. and he was very kind of, yeah, he was very serious. But at the same time, I don't know if that's just the way he was and came across. I don't think necessarily that meant that he was like this ruthless guy. That was, I think he was quite a nice, warm guy. And he wanted to play good football as well. And I think tactically, it was a step up. I think we stepped up tactically, um, and yeah, I think I think tactically mixed with the ability and the league we were in, it was just too much for some teams. And you know, we we clearly moved up a couple levels mm. under Slavisa. And it's strange now because obviously Slavisa went to Fulham and he was playing this like total football, like false nine in the championship, and just everyone you're playing out from the back. We weren't quite like that. You know, I was trying to think back. I, were we like that? I don't yeah, know we, we were. We'd, yeah, yeah, we sort of played a yeah. solid diamond for most of the time. Mm. Um, and, um, yeah, so he wasn't he, he, he wasn't that expansive, but he, those principles were still there. He wanted us to pass, play mm. through the thirds, and obviously we did score a lot of goals. Igalo, um, oh goodness. Dini, <laughs> and Vidra. I mean, that's a hell of a front three in the championship, to be fair. Yeah, um, but... I mean, again, aside from those attackers, how important were the uh, the lone players that season? I look at uh, Matthew Connolly, Ben Watson. How important were they? Guardiola as well. What a Guardiola, yeah. love that man. Yeah, and they all and they all played a part. It wasn't like they were just uh, in the background. You know, they were like you say, they they were very important players for for the squad. Guardiola like, was a great player. Yeah. You know, like and Matthew Connolly had like three or four promotions or something like that coming into our. So, like, we had a lot of know-how. I mean, they were our squad players, someone who's been promoted, like, three, four times. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we had we just had too much, I think, in the end. And mm. I remember it's been comfortable, but I don't think it was quite as comfortable as, as what I remember it. You know, we were, <laughs> who was chasing us? And it was, it was Middlesbrough, and they played yeah. away at Fulham. And funnily enough, it was McCormack who sealed the goal, which was, uh, that was interesting. Was <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean... So, Jonathan, I've yeah. got to ask you about that night out as well in uh, Watford Town Centre. Oh, <laughs> I yeah, actually remember yeah. it vividly. I've got a picture of yeah. you. Um, it was me, you, and Tommy Hoban. And yeah. <laughs> my dad went to take the. Have you seen it? I've sent it to Sam and sent it on. But <laughs> my dad goes to you, oh, can we have a picture? And you and Tommy are like posing with the bottles, going like, yeah, yeah. And I'm just standing there like. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, in that terms was a great the... day. Oh, what great a day. day yeah. What a day. Yeah. Have you got any that stories was... from that? Uh, from the celebrations. <laughs> well, obviously we won that game. We knew it was massive. And then that was an early kickoff. So we were on the coach on the way back and we're just watching the scores come through. Oh, I know what you're talking about now. Yeah. Rotherham versus Norwich, was it? Uh, yeah. yeah. Rotherham think... and Fulham Middlesbrough. So, yeah. Yeah. So like one of the games was going our way, but then someone scored a late equaliser. And we were like, oh, like we thought we were going to be up. It was there. Do you know what I mean? And then, in the 94th minute, a goal went in. It must have been a Rotherham goal or Norwich goal. I can't, I can't remember. And, um, yeah, it was just pandemonium, like, on, on the bus. Everyone's going crazy. But it happened just as we got to the training ground. So we were all straight off the bus, just running around the training ground, just sort of, like... <laughs> Let the sex begin. Just in various directions. <laughs> like, it was a nice summer's day. So, like, some people just out on the training pitch, like, some in the changing room. Everyone's just running around, like, it's crazy. Mad. And, um... Yeah, so that day it was we had um we had a few drinks and food at the training ground, and while well, things got sorted in in the town, and um, <laughs> but it wasn't like we didn't have time to go home and get changed. Do you know what I mean? Because we'd come from home in our tracksuits. Yeah. So we were in these like bright red Watford tracksuits, just going into like 
Zinchenko in, yeah, like Oceana or something <laughs> at the end of the night, <laughs> just running around like, like it's weird. Like, oh, Oceana brilliant. obviously massive, but like he's just running around the Watford track suit, and everyone's just it was good stuff. It was really good. Yeah, it was funny. In terms of was, um, yeah, oh, sorry, Sam, gone. Sorry. Mate. Was that was uh with the Brighton game though? Was that last five minutes the longest five minutes of your life? Because I can't remember a longer five minutes in mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah do you know what I don't remember it clearly but I remember my heart was just going like someone made an incredible block who I can't remember oh, it was, was and it then Gomez might have been Angela. Angela. I, it, yeah. I think it might have been Connolly I, I think, think it, it might was. have been Connolly as well <laughs> Um, but it was like it was everything about the, like, like Ben Watson like stood with the ball like on the edge of the box and got it nicked off him and I was like what are you that's just yeah, like that's yeah but thing. it's like that <laughs> anything, anyone does anything wrong at that point they're, they're the worst player in the world but um, yeah then obviously when Vidra scored it was just like yeah it was crazy I mean that was a really really good feeling yeah yeah. yeah. In, in terms of that um, just look back on that season as a whole um, Jonathan like obviously that was your last one at the club uh, before you moved to Reading what was Obviously, you worked under a really experienced pro in Almunia, and then Horelio comes in 2014. Again, that was a really big signing for the club, a man who'd been at Tottenham, Premier League experience, uh, Eredivisie experience as well. What was what was he like to work with um, in training? He was a hell of a goalkeeper, really, really. I mean, when working up, working up close to him, I um, I I realised he should have gone probably further than what he actually did. Really. Uh, in his career and he went pretty far I mean he played Champions League semi-finals with PSV and played for Spurs obviously huge but like when he played for Spurs he was getting a lot of critics and stick and like that's kind of what what we remembered about him at the time he's completely changed that perception but obviously when he comes into the club I've now I, you know I'm two years older than I was when Almunia first came into the club and I'm beginning to think right okay now this is my competition now you know I need to actually fight this guy from, for a place and um, from when he started playing, I was like, well, you know, this is going to be a lot. I mean, I knew it was going to be hard, but this is going to be a lot more yeah, difficult yeah. than I thought. Because, like, he he was, he was can come and get crosses anyway. It was like he was coming to get crosses, and it was just easy for him. It was like he was jumping up. Like, his last step before going to take it was like he was on the trampoline. He was literally, like, <laughs> three metres above everyone. And saves he made, his arms were so long, it seemed. And he just used to make these saves, pull them out of the bottom corners. And um, yeah, I mean, he he was just a massive, he was a massive player for us, really, yeah. that season. He, he saved us a lot. And I don't think we would have gone up without him, really. No. Well, you know, I would have been playing and you never <laughs> oh, <know. yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, I mean, right. I mean, in you're terms right. of like, um, in terms of, yeah, not, not, not you, in terms of like, the, the, the um as you mentioned the, the voice saves in the at, dressing room the saves at Bolton oh my goodness like that yeah. was ridiculous when you look back through the season you know some vital saves at like massive moments I mean Brighton I can't remember what the save was I think there was a double save or something like yeah. that mm. it was it was on like the Brighton. floor and he like oh it's brilliant yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um at that point you know once you once you play a season and you you get off to a good start. And then, to be fair, I played a couple games that season from the start, and I did really well. And I yeah, yeah, I remember. Like, yeah. The, the Derby I mean, game was a, was brilliant. Yeah, and I remember it was around the time where maybe he was having a bit more of a difficult time. You know, I was getting a little bit older, and I was thinking like, like, come on, Slav, like, give me a chance or whatever. But then, quite quickly after that, he just went. Shh, do you know what I mean? Like, he, his performances were just so consistent, so good. And um, look, as long as we get promoted, then that was the main thing. So I think yeah. that's really interesting um, in terms of like you could have quite easily kicked your toys out the pram at some points, but you were such a such a squad player and a team player. Um, mm. In terms of, uh, was, there, was there any points where you did think, you know, what I need to be banging on the manager's office? I I want more game time, etc. Or was there any, did that happen yeah. at, at points? Yeah, that season there was. I mean, looking back now, that sounds strange to say but I mean if you go through the games obviously no one's going to do that if you go through the games that season you know when I came in like Derby for example or whatever or, um, or in the cup in the cup games that I played like I always I always did really well and then that gave me a, it gives you a chance to say to the manager look you know if, if, if he's having a, a difficult time or whatever you know you can trust me and mm-hmm. then, you know I've come in I've done well and it's not like I'm completely inexperienced. You know, I played 
um, in important moments, important times and seasons, like we talked about 2013. So it wasn't like throwing a random kid in goal at the time. So I knew I had sort of an argument, but I also knew that, you know, you're, you're up against the experience and uh, um, the ability of someone like Gomez. And then to be fair, you know, once he got on to play in the Premier League and stuff, it seems ridiculous to think that, you know, I was that close to playing. But because of how well he's done since then, but obviously that's that's down to him. He's done. He's done. Amazing. He's probably what goes down as one of the Watford legends. Would that yeah. be too yeah, much no, to that's say? Fair. But yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely in terms of goalkeepers. But yeah, he's but he's been a legend for us. In terms of in terms of yourself, as you mentioned, probably fair to say you would have liked to have got more game time in that period. It was difficult, of course, with the goalkeepers that were at the club. Yeah. At the end of that season, we've just come off a, a, a come off a high. Personal wise. Was it still a massive high coming off the promotion or was it a bit like, you know, I would have liked to have been involved more? Well, I'd imagine that was the case. But in terms of like, were you were you as positive as everyone who were, who was playing was, if you know what I mean? I was because I'd been through that journey of the seasons before. And I get quite, you know, every, every end of a season before a start of a new one, you have a decision to make. Do you know what I mean? Like as a goalkeeper, right, OK, I'm not going to start the season as number one because Amuni is there or... I mean, he's there again for the second season and then Gomez is there. So I was kind of evaluating at the start of each season. You, you don't want to miss out on a big chance. You know, I could go on loan to a, I don't know, uh, a League One club or whatever. I can't remember. I'm making it up. But let's say I got the opportunity to go on loan to a League One club. I think, and it's that difficult decision between going and playing games in League One, which is great, or something potentially career changing and defining you know if Gomez got to, gets injured and misses two months of the season and I play and do really well and we get promoted mm-hmm. suddenly you're sort of looking at like a you know a chance in the Premier League so it was always a difficult decision for me like because it's I was so close and I was it was just there and I kind of I knew it was there and each season I made that choice to go so one season didn't happen then the next season didn't happen it's got to happen this season Looking back, I probably should have gone on loan. Obviously, hindsight is a wonderful thing. Like, but I probably should have gone and got the games because then, you, then suddenly you're catching up. Do you know what I mean? At yeah. 22, some goalkeepers have gone out, played two full seasons worth of football, and I've not played that many games. Even though when I have played, they've been big ones and important ones in the championship, or whatever. So it was, yeah, it was interesting um, from that perspective. But in terms of during that season. Um, no, I was, I was never, I never got to the point where I was like, ah, do you know what I mean? Like losing my head, throwing my toys out of my pram. I'm usually quite good with that kind of thing. I can be really disappointed inside and I can even tell the manager, you know, I think I should get a chance here or whatever, but I'm never going to cause a problem kind of thing in, in the change room, especially in a promotion season. Yeah, that's so important, isn't it? Having those, those personalities around the club. Um mm-hmm. End of that season, and then, as you said, you make the des- the decision after each campaign: do I stay or do I go? What was it? I know you said we were close to you had the kind of Premier League opportunity, maybe as a as a second choice behind behind Herrelio. What was it about that season? And you thought, you know, what it's time to move on. And why did why did you feel it was the right time to move on from Watford at the end of the uh, 2014-15 season? The chart. I mean, first of all, they brought in a goalkeeper, didn't they? They brought in Arlauskis. Yeah. True. He so um, suddenly he was born. yeah. <laughs> it, but like, they, so you had Gomez, then Arlauskis, and then you you know you're getting a picture of right. Okay, I'm gonna have to go on loan here, and I had the chance to go on loan. So now stay at Watford, go on loan, or I've got one or two clubs here in the Championship, good clubs, saying that you know we want you to come here and be number one. And it's oh well, can I can I come on loan and be number one there? They're like no, like, no, no, no. You are obviously go permanently. So I made the decision to go. Um, but looking back I probably should have taken the loan option because I still had developing to do especially physically um, which you just don't know until you obviously try and start uh, doing it Mm. so um, I was doing my development really most of my most of my development at Reading as their number one in the championship at 20 just turned 22 years old which is a big ask to be fair, looking back, you know, I hadn't played that many games leading into that. So suddenly you're trying to learn on the job and you're trying to do it at a different club under a lot of expectation. And probably also on top of that, I probably physically wasn't ready yet. 
Mm. So, um, which sounds strange at 22, but um, yeah, I think I was still, you know, you're still learning about your body and things mm. like that. But um, yeah, that, that was that was my thinking really going into that into that move. Um, it was just an opportunity, and that's mm. why I chose to go. Did you do you regret that decision, or do you think it was the right one at the time? I know hindsight obviously is a great thing. But... Yeah, I mean, I would say yes, I do. But like, who's to say that I wouldn't still be at Watford now as third choice? Do you know what I mean? Like sniffing around for loans and stuff, and. You know, I'm homegrown. It's probably nice for them to keep me around for their, their quotas and stuff. And it's difficult to know. I mean, you, your career can just go like that. And uh, even though I did go to Reading, I did play quite a few games. And I, you know, went, went down um, and played even more games in, in League One, played some games for West Brom. So I have ended up playing games mm. um, by making that decision. And I've been, and I, and I know what it's like to change clubs now. Whereas if I was still at Watford, that's There's not true. that much room for development. Do you know what I mean? If I'm not playing for Watford, I'm only going on loan. It's just a bit different. Um, so it's a difficult so, question to answer. Yeah. I mean, we don't want to keep you for too much longer. Um, we appreciate your time. So just yes. fast uh, <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Go for it, guys. Just stay um, for another hour if you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, fast forwarding to West Brom. Um, I'm right in saying you played yeah. at the Olympic Stadium this year uh, in the Epic uh, Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah um yeah. so obviously as a way fan it's really not a great stadium but what's it like actually playing there like you're so far away from the fans does it make a difference at all yeah it was great i mean for an away team it's great to go there because they yeah. were they were in a difficult moment the fans were getting on their backs we knew we started well in the first five ten minutes that's exactly what happened we started really well they started poorly really and um the fans were right on their backs we're playing in this amazing arena do you know what I mean? Like the stadium is incredible and it was a packed stadium, but everyone's on your side. Like West Ham, West Ham fans are on their backs and our fans are with us kind of thing. So it was, it was perfect for us really. And so, yeah, in terms of the stadium it was amazing. Like just to walk up there was, was incredible. You, you're starting again in a few weeks back in the championship. Uh, do you think you're going to go up? Uh, I hope so. We are starting here yeah, in, in two weeks. I mean, you just don't know, do you? When, like, how what's going to happen when you start back up? Whether you're going to find that form again? But look, we look good. We look good in training. We, I think, we feel good. We're all fully fit. We've got some players back from injury, um, and we. I tell you what, we've got a really good manager, a really, really good manager, and he, you know, if you give someone like that time with the squad and the team, um that is very beneficial when he's got time to work, especially tactically with the team um, that I think when we've had times during the season where we've had an extended period of time to a bit more training, we've always benefited from that. So hopefully um, it will all come together and we'll finish the job, but we're only six points ahead. So it's not exactly done and dusted. England, is that still aspirations you have? I know you played in the under 21s under Southgate and what would be interesting to find out is, did you ever think that, Gareth would go on to manage the, the uh, senior team or was there signs that you thought, you know what, he could he could progress from the under-21 level? Um, which one do you want me to answer first? Yeah, sorry, that was like two in one, wasn't it? Um, yeah. Okay, first off, uh, England under-21s, what was that experience like? Um, it was amazing. I mean, the standard was great. In many ways, I felt more comfortable playing there because it kind of it kind of suits. It's it's a lot quicker. It's more technical. Kind of suits what I am as a goalkeeper, kind of thing. Um, so I always enjoyed it. The players were were we had a really good group, a really close group, um, and Gareth made that happen. He created that atmosphere in 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 that two years, two three years I was there. Um, and then I got to see it play out, you know, where you think you've got a really good chance. You've got all these great players and then you go to the Euros and we didn't get out of the group. And it's like, <laughs> you think you're going to be different. And yeah, it's just yeah. like, that's happened again, is it? Um, but it, it, it kind of showed that it was just, you know, it taught, it, it, it taught us a little bit about fine margins, really. You know, we lost the first game from a deflection, lost 1-0, probably should have won. Um but then we nicked a, a win against Sweden the next game. So, you know, probably might not have deserved to win that game. And then the next one was just like, we decided to go go for it a little bit more and we just got picked off. Uh, 
So I, I, yeah, I don't need to go into too much detail about the, the tournament, but it was it was an interesting experience because um, to watch England as a fan, you know, I'm the same as you boys. Like, it's just oh, why can't you know why yeah. can't they just just I mean, to be fair, the the World Cup just gone was a bit different, but um, to then be a part of a, a team that probably underachieved in a tournament like that was uh, was interesting, and um, it gave you a little bit of an insight as to maybe how difficult these tournaments really are. Gareth, what was he like to work under as well? Yeah, he was great. He was he was so popular with everyone. He um he picked a really good number two as well. Uh, a coach who was like coaching at um at Chelsea as the assistant for years and then he was doing both jobs at the same time, Steve Holland. Oh yes, yeah, Steve, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so it was a great balance because Gareth is so respected and was such a nice guy knew obviously knew everything um from a tactical point of view but then you had steve putting on some great sessions alongside that and and gareth maintaining kind of like the management side of things and it they just worked together really well and i could i could definitely see it I, i'll tell you what he's a great talker as well like really? in interviews and stuff he comes across really yeah, well yeah, yeah i think and i think in that moment where you're giving it on a caretaker basis I felt like his interviews were so important in that in that um, in that period because it kind of people were quite angry. Who was the manager before? I think people uh, didn't. They weren't. People weren't really behind Gareth. I don't think by and large. And then they they that the way that he talks in interviews and the way that the team perform and the just everything about it. He was just ticking all the boxes. He was picking the right players. You know, a form that everyone. Has always cried out for people to be picking, and it was like it was just a breath of a breath of fresh air, and um, yeah, I, I was buzzing. I was honestly, I was really, really happy that he went on to. And then I always knew he'd do if he got the chance. That was the main thing. Really? Just get in there. I, I knew he'd do well, and he's done amazing, really. But um, I just, yeah, it was just whether he would or wouldn't was was my only concern at the time. And and when he did it, it was yeah, he was only ever going to do well. Have you got any ambitions or goals? Don't want to put too much pressure on yourself, but is there any ambitions and goals for the rest of your career? Because you're still young as a goalkeeper, particularly um, played at the Championship level. Is the of course is the aspiration to to play in the Premier League and and is have you got any like short term goals in mind or, or long term goals that you'd willing be willing to um, share with us? <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, my my goals have always been um, the same. I mean, the crazy thing about goalkeeping and with the Premier League, with England, whatever you want to say, things can happen so quickly. So you always got to be prepared. So I think I went through probably a dip where I was started off um, really well and then struggled physically, performances dipped maybe a little bit, had to reprove myself and, and come back up to the same level. So I've, I've learned so much now about, well, in every aspect really of goalkeeping. And, you know, if only I knew what the mentality was when I was like 20, 21 kind of thing, it would have helped. But in terms of goals, um, they haven't changed too much. Premier League, do you know what I mean? That's the, that's mm. the uh, I think that's everyone's goal and it's not that far away. So I don't see it as an unrealistic one. Um, I know that I have the ability, it's just about proving it and, and doing it and showing it. So um, it's all well and good saying, oh, these are my goals and whatnot, but you've got to do it and you've got to mm. show it. And um, that only comes from training and working hard. So that is that is the secret, which isn't really a secret. It's just <laughs> everyone knows that you just got to do it and and um, take your opportunity when it comes. Yeah, just uh, just to finish off, uh, I just want to thank you so much again for coming on. Uh, I said it right at the start, but um, you know this is also the first proper insight that we've got into a Pozzo era player, and uh, it's been mm. a pleasure to have you on. And uh, you'll always be welcome back at the Vic. Cheers, lads. It's been great. Hopefully we'll be seeing really you uh, at West Brom next season at the very That'd be good. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. Would Top be man, good. Jonathan. Thanks so much for your time today, buddy. I really do nice appreciate one, that. Cheers. Top man. See you later, Jonathan. See you later. See you later. Thank you.